Good day everyone, we are group 2. For today's lesson, we are going to talk about lesson 2, indigenous materials, tools, and its importance. For an overview, the indigenous creative crafts of Mindanao and the Philippines reflect the rich and diverse cultural heritage of the people, from weaving to pottery, from carving to metalwork. These crafts showcase the scales, traditions, and values of the various ethnic groups that inhabit the archipelago. These crafts are not only functional but also artistic, expressing the identity, beliefs, and aspirations of the makers. They are also a source of pride, livelihood, and empowerment for the indigenous cultural communities. Some of the most notable examples of these crafts are the colorful textiles of the Tibuli and Yakan, the intricate brassware of the Maranao and Maguindanao, the elaborate wood carvings of the Ifogao and Bagobo, and the fine pottery of the Manobo and the Mandaya. These are the indigenous tools in the zone with their uses. First, gapas, term used by the Itawis that refers to agriculture, Handheld tool with a virus slicker blade used for cutting grass or harvesting grain crops. Hand tractor. It is used to pull a harrow and plow in preparing a large area of land. Thresher. A machine used for separating grain crops into grain or seeds and straw. Backpack sprayer. A spraying apparatus consisting of a knapsack tank together with pressurizing device, used chiefly in fire control and in spraying insecticides. Kuliglig, term used by the Taoists which refer to an improvised hand tractor vehicle composed of two-wheel tractor on front and two-wheel trailer at the end that was used in daily transportation and, and carrier of some farmers. Aradu, term used by the Taoists which refer to a traditional plow with the use of carabao to pull through the rice paddy. Here's the other indigenous tools in our country. Padalom or bomba. It is a machine used to increase the pressure of water to move it on another place to supply water in the rice field. Next is bilaw. It is a flat tray used to separate the heavier seeds from the empty or lighter one and from dust panicles and straw, which may contain or attract insects. Next is Jalidai, also known as Ulnas. This is an all-purpose utility sled of wood and bamboo that is hitched by the carabao. Suyut, it is a big rake to get to grass and push the excess of mud into another place to finish the planing of the rice field. Next is Karita. So it refers to traditional carabao driven rice field carriage. Next is Kalikai. It is a rake used for drawing together the rice grain that was being dried. The Saki. So it is a tray uh, to load the rice grain after uh, drying it under the sun. Another indigenous group that is quite known in the Philippines as Sea Gypsies is no other than the Bajau people. To start with, the Bajau tribe is an indigenous population whose culture and livelihood are tied to the sea. So this group of people are also widely known as the Sea Gypsies, specifically in the parts of Sulu and Silebe Sea, and that they are scattered along the coastal areas of Tawi-Tawi, Sulu, Basilan, and in far-off places such as in Surigao, Davao, and Zamboanga. And their origin is somewhat unknown, but many historians and anthropologists believe that Bajaus migrated from Malaysia. As for the Bajau people, there are certain characteristics that are distinctly attributable to their environment and the mode of life. That is, their sturdy built and dark brown hair and their manner of walking that is affected to a large extent by their crooking in both stern while sailing and fishing. 
They are also called, according to their Tausug Samal neighbors, as Samaluaan or the outcasts and Samalaud or Palau, which mean the people of the ocean. Furthermore, this group of people is said to have developed their indigenous knowledge system over time, such as their fishing and mat weaving practices from their ancestors. Their ancestors are said to have handed on to the next generation of all of their indigenous knowledge system and practices through oral communication and practical experiences. So I have here provided pictures that shows how the Bajau people lives in their daily life. As their way of life or about their fishing technique, their fishing methods employed by the Bajaus includes pagambit or deep sea fishing, sangkaliya or shark fishing but it is not so popular and is not marketable, and the lingi or net fishing which categorizes the drift netting and the leaf nets. They also have other terms of their fishing technique, which is called as a messy or a hook and line fishing and a mana or a spear gun fishing. As for the tools that they use, they have the paubik or pana spear and arrow or hook and line, the bubu and pangal or a cone-shaped bamboo fish trap or the salakab, and the pitikan or a diving weapon. The Bajau's fishing activity varies with tides, monsoonal and local winds, currents, migrations of pelagic fish, and the monthly lunar cycle. Most drift netting is done on falling tides with favored periods coinciding with the new, full, and dark or late rising phases of the moon. And during moonless nights, fishing is often done with lanterns using spears and hand lines. So as mentioned, their fishing equipment such as the drift net is used to capture fish by entangling them, while the leaf nets is used in fishing in shallow waters by using bait or lights to attract fish over the opening of the net. And the spears and or spear guns are used to shoot directly the fish and other sea creatures like octopus and sea cucumbers. And the hand lines and long lines in which the latter is a set length of line where it has branch lines carrying baited hooks in order to catch fish and the fish traps or salakan. On the other hand, the Bajals are also known for their expertise in mat weaving and it also helps augment the family income. So it is basically done by the Bajau women in their spare time where female children are also involved. So the materials they use includes the pandan leaves, the jangatan, an equidistant metal bladed tool for stripping pandan leaves, the ambuhut or a bamboo stick for flattening the leaves, and the angangibi or a dye for coloring the strips of for weaving. So it is said that the technique of preparation and weaving are similar across the Sulu, with some minor variations across the different regions of the Sulu Sea. So in general, the Bajau people are considered as indigenous group in the Philippines according to the following as you can see here in the slide. Good day everyone, my name is Mary Joy Sam and I am reporting about tools and uses that were found in Visayas. Bolo, it can be used as a tools or weapons. Next is Balasyong or Balisong. It is a Filipino sword. Next is Kuna. It is used for digging roots or weeding gardens. Sumpit or sumpitan, terms for blowguns. It used for hunting and warfare. Sphere or pika, consisting of a shaft usually of wood with a pointed head, designed for hunting and combat. Next is draw net. It is used for fishing. Next, earthen pot. Helps in spreading the heat equally throughout your dish. Balaraw or winged dagger. It a symbol status among nobility and warrior. 
Next, Utak. It is a sword with a wide tip design for cutting forward and is a one-handed weapon meant for chopping. Bear Bull Cart or Partigo, used for traveling in field. In the generalization, traditional tools are an essential aspect of indigenous life even to today. From the use of clay for factory, for example, making of warashis, matapi, and mats from various palm tree leaves, the weaving or plating or crafting tools, and arrows for hunting purposes, we see a wealth of knowledge about the natural resources needed and, of course, the skills to craft the products. This knowledge is not well documented, but rather as most traditional knowledge is kept alive through the share of knowledge from one generation to the next. Now, how important the instruments in one's culture, particularly here in Mindanao? The instruments or tools in the indigenous culture here in Mindanao helps to enrich the social, cultural, and economic life of in indigenous communities and provide opportunities to generate income, gain employment, develop professional skills, and participate in the nation's economy while maintaining a continued connection to one country.